everybody. This is Brian Ankney with Auto Success Magazine. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us today. Today, my guest is Tim James from Fleck Fusion. He's going to discuss five profitable ways to use video in your service department. And actually, that's a really exciting uh, topic for us. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have saw last week the second issue of Auto Success Service came out, a brand new publication that covers all things fixed operations. Um, if, if you haven't already, please go to Facebook and join the group Auto Success Webinars. You just type it into the search on Facebook, it'll bring it up. It's, 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 a, it's an open group. It's a great place for you to suggest future webinar topics you'd like to see covered and a place to interact with both our presenters and other attendees. As, as you try to implement the things you're going to learn today and in other webinars, you know, if you hit a, hit a stumbling block or, or, or you've got something in front of you that you don't know what, what to do, you know, go there and ask because there's lots of other people that are, that are undertaking that same initiative and you can, you can utilize, you know, their experiences and their solutions to help in your store as well. Tim, if you'd like, you know, take it away. I appreciate everybody coming. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, if you have questions, please type them in the question bar. It's on the right. Next to questions, you hit the plus sign. It opens up. You type in a question. And then, and then from there, I'll save all the questions for the end of the presentation, and we, we will get to all of them. Uh, Tim, take it away. Thank you, sir, Brian. I, I appreciate it, and thank you for uh, having me uh, here again. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to be here with Auto Success, and thank you, everybody in the audience who, who's taking time out of your day to, uh, to join us. I hope uh, we're able to give you some valuable uh, information, and uh, definitely look forward to your feedback. Um, we are going to talk about uh, five profitable ways that you can use uh, video in your service department. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we all know that, uh, you know, video is about storytelling. And with today, more and more dealerships really starting to gear up, adding a lot of video content, shooting this kind of a video, that kind of a video, um, the, the stories that are being told out there are, are getting better and better. Uh, so obviously when it comes to storytelling and, it, and, and really connecting with that shopper to get that shopper into your funnel, get them into your store, uh, the best story wins. So it's never been more critical than it is today, than today to really uh, start learning what to do with this video. You know, we've got this kind of video, that kind of video. Um, there, a lot of you probably already have some great video content. And, uh, you know, huge thumbs up to y'all for the, for the ones of you that do. The ones that, that are in, you know, in the audience today that, that don't uh, have a lot of, of video content yet, that's okay. Now, I'm, you know, that's probably why you're here. And uh, hopefully we're going to give you a good, uh, a good blueprint. Um, and that's what this is uh, really about, is, is exactly that, a blueprint of not just what videos you should have uh, for a good video marketing strategy for your service department, but how you should use those videos, really leveraging them against, uh, along with each other so that they have the, the, the biggest impact uh, on your overall business. Because that's one of the biggest, unfortunately, the, the biggest things uh, problems that I see with dealers out there today is exactly that. They've got video, they just don't have a strategy. And there's a big difference between the two. So as we uh, just move along a little bit, I'll throw out a couple of numbers for you. I always like uh, seeing these statistics because, you know, the, the numbers that we see surrounding video are already huge. Um, but man, they're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. They're going to continue to grow. Um, Cisco projects that by 2018, 80% of all internet traffic is going to be some kind of a video. Um, it's already close to 60%. So it's not like that's a huge, uh, you know, un untangible number. It's grown so fast over the last couple of years already. Um, How-to videos um, are one of the top uh, search terms. They're up 70%. Um, just uh, just from uh, year over year, uh, companies that use video have 41% more web traffic from search. Um, there, I mean, there's number after number after number, 40% uh, more chance of, of a purchase if you have a video as part of your, uh, your res the, the research that a shopper's done via a mobile device. 
Um, tons of, of statistics. Uh, of course, we've heard about using video and emails. 200% uh, increase in click-through rate uh, with some kind of a, a video associated with the, uh, with the, the, the email. Um, the consumers tell us they want video. The shoppers say that 59% of the shoppers said they would prefer to watch a video instead of reading a text and uh, you know looking at pictures. So that's really what video, you know, the 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 main reason for using video is just exactly that. If the shopper tells us this is what the kind of media they want to uh, to utilize as a marketer we have to make certain that we're delivering our content the way that the shopper wants. For your service department, it's now, you know, and the story that you can tell, it's really about humanizing that department. Man, from a consumer standpoint, we start thinking about, uh, I've got this service that needs to be done, I've got that service to, that needs to be done. Obviously, your new purchase customers, um, you know, the, your shoppers who, who have just purchased a vehicle from you, the very next sell now is getting them to your service department. You've got all kinds of special programs um, that you install there at the store to try to, to make that uh, vehicle customer a service department customer as quickly as possible. But that's such a small percentage of the population in your area. So there's a, a, a lot of storytelling that you can do to the population around you to let them know that you know, your service department isn't such a scary place. Um, it's, that's, that's just really what it comes down to is overcoming fear. When we talk about fear, you know, the, as a consumer, we think that if we go to a dealership for our services, it's, you're going to take longer to perform the same service than, than if I took it down the road to this quick shop or that quick shop because they've got the word quick in it. Um, you know, they're, they spend, the, 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 the other shops in your neighborhood spend tons of money advertising and playing on that fear, sending messages day after day to your shopper, your, your customers, and your potential customers telling them, you need to, if you have a service, you need to bring your vehicle to us because we're not going to take as long. They then also play on the fear of that it's going to cost more if I take it to the to the dealership. And there may be a lot of times when certain services that's true, but there's also a reason that this particular service or that particular service might come with an extra cost, a little additional cost at the dealership when it comes to the experience and the expertise of your of your team. Uh, but then the big thing is just in general. Shoppers, consumers don't trust mechanics in general. Um, you factor in the general fear that the consumers have with dealerships overall. Um, you've got a, you, you're fighting two battles at the same time. So that's really what what this what your strategy has to be built around is how can I overcome these fears that the consumer has that's preventing more of not just our new car purchasers, but the general public that's, uh, that's in our, our, uh, our city to overcome those fears and get the, those, the, them to trust us and bring their car into us for service. So I've broken it down into these five particular uh, types of videos that are extremely important to your, to your strategy. Now, there are other videos you can use as well, but every service department video strategy needs to have, at a minimum, these five. So let's jump into them. Uh, first, let's talk about the value proposition. This is the why trust us message. So you probably have a good value proposition for your dealership as a whole. It's really targeting the new car shopper, you need a similar video for your service department. A video that says, hey, you know what? Here's who we are on the service side of the, of the dealership. Here's why you can trust us. Here's the expectation. We know you have this, 
this mental expectation in your head already. Let me let me tell you what the real expectation is, and uh, and why you should bring your car to us. Hi, I'm Ron Phillips, Service Director at Russell Toyota Scion, and thank you for visiting our website. I'd like to take this time to show you what Russell has to offer. It starts right here with our valet check-in and parking. Once you've entered our service right up area, you'll be greeted by one of our 12 service advisors eager to take care of your service needs. You'll find our staff courteous, friendly, and caring. With your convenience in mind, we also offer shuttle, loaner, and rental vehicles by appointment. For those visits that you'll be waiting with us, please enjoy our spacious and comfortable waiting room. Have a cup of coffee and or tea. We also offer Wi-Fi access that you can utilize for school, work, and fun. We offer a children's play area. We also have a quiet lounge for those that would like it. Our dealership has 38 service bays with state-of-the-art diagnostic and repair equipment with factory trained technicians. Our technicians have met skill level guidelines of the manufacturer of certified, expert, master, as well as the highest level of master diagnostic technician. Focusing on your availability, we offer night owl and early bird drop off. So that way your vehicle can be dropped off no matter the hour service on behalf of the Russell organization so a lot of good content in that video you see that it doesn't have to be this huge high dollar production um, just really making it real you know the bringing bringing things home uh, really humanizing the experience that somebody's going to have really talking about the experience of the mechanics um, you know the the convenient features uh, all kinds of great stuff. Here's another example. We do have extended hours. We are open from 7 a.m. until midnight, Monday through Friday. We are open on Saturday from 8 to 4. Um, we also have a great lobby for our customers. Uh, we have a cafe. We have free Wi-Fi. Um, we also have a play area for our children as well. We actually have our express maintenance that we do. It's less than 59 minutes. They take care of your oil change, dry rotation, um, your inspection of the vehicle. We suggest that you normally do make appointments with us um, over the phone or through email, whichever one you prefer. But we also take walk-ins as well to those customers that can't come in for appointments. We service all Toyota makes and models as well as Scion. We also have a special day for ladies. That's every Wednesday we do a free lunch and a little goodie bag from our service advisors. We have people with cosmetic products, jewelry. Um, we've also had a masseuse come in and give massages to our ladies. So it's a good way to keep our ladies um, occupied and keep them pampered while they're getting their car started. You know, what a great message. You know, that's, uh, the, I think the fear is definitely amplified. Um, for women, you know, and, and their fear of mechanics, um, really, you know, thinking that uh, if, if they take their vehicle to a mechanic um, without, you know, their husband, their brother, cousin, a male friend, whomever, that they're, they're just really going to get taken advantage of. And, you know, that's a great message. If you have a program like that, make sure you're talking about it uh, in your, uh, your, your value proposition video. Um, Mention any kind of uh, awards that your uh, service department has, has won. Mention your uh, Better Business Bureau rating. Um, definitely talk about the experience of your techs, uh, how they're trained, um, any kind of special incentives or events like, uh, like was mentioned. But again, it's all about humanizing. It's all about just making it real and, uh, and making sure that you, you're really overcoming that initial, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if we can really trust these guys, uh, you know, feeling that, uh, that most shoppers are going to have. So next we'll talk about your testimonial videos. Now a testimonial video, there's, there's two types of, of videos that you can do. This one is just um, what I call just a, uh, a production style. So you can tell they've put a little bit more work into it. Um, they're doing some post uh, uh, shoot editing. They have different types of clips and whatnot. But it's still uh, very humanized in that you can really uh, feel like the, the person who's talking to you, you know, in the first video, it's you telling the shopper, you can trust us. 
in the testimonial video, it's, it's other shoppers telling other shoppers, you can trust them. And that's powerful when they hear it from somebody else, but it can't sound scripted. It does still have to sound real and humanized. So here's one, one example of how a uh, testimonial video can, can flow. So, you know, you just really get to know that guy in that short period of time. You really feel like, you know what, I can trust him. And if he says all these great things about that service department, then, um, yeah, I, I, I get it. I, my, my fear level is definitely coming down. The next way would be, and this is, might be the better way to, for you to start. If you don't have any service testimonials already and you're looking for, a, a you know, how do I get something which which is, you know, hopefully then going to be better than nothing. Um, and that's an interview style. So that's where you have a certain list of questions that you're asking um, the person. Try to, try to make it a little easier on, on your customer so they don't have to, you know, really, uh, you know, think off the, off the cuff. And uh, who are you? Where are you from? My name is Alan Schwartz. I'm from Minnetonka, Minnesota. And what people are you having service today? I have uh, 2005 C and who was your service advisor today? Andrew Lehman. And could you tell us a little bit about your experience today? Well, this was uh, a double experience. One is I had a recall, so I mean, the attic was responding very well, and I got it from my oil change, and they found that I needed a replacement part on the rear end. Which they found very well. Great. Would you recommend worries to family and friends? Yes. I used Marge for a while, and my customer here in Deadline for over five or six years. So the, the interview style works extremely effectively, uh, effective for you as well. Um, ask them, you know, about any fears they had prior to coming in. Were there any concerns? To, was there anything that, uh, you know, in the back of your mind that, uh, you know, that you were thinking about uh, uh, that would make your experience negative? Let's, you know, get it out there in front so that everybody's talking about it and then make sure they, they address how you were able to overcome that fear and really give them a completely different experience than what they uh, perceived was what they were going to have. Because again, now you're, you're talking the language of the other customers that are out there that are having those exact same fears and, and preconceived thoughts. Um, really uh, mention, you know, the value of what they, uh, of the experience. Um, ask them what they like most about the experience. Um, you know, really try to try to get the shopper, um, try to get the customer um, to to loosen up and to uh, to really just kind of talk and, and start free flowing a little bit. But if you can just get them to hit on a couple of quick points, it doesn't have to be dynamic. It doesn't have to be this huge production, and it can still have a lot of value and go a long way in. When, when viewed by other uh, customers or potential customers in overcoming some of those uh, those initial fears and helping uh, get them down to your store as well. So um, a couple of ways to do the um, 
testimonial videos, and the same goes for the service manager introduction videos. There's a couple of different ways that you can do them. One way would be uh, to, to the interview style, like we were just talking about, um, where again you've got a certain list of questions, things that you want to make sure that you're that you're asking uh, your service manager, and uh, you know really humanizing them, but most importantly, really helping the, the, the public know that you can trust me now. So this is really what this video is all about is look, um, I know this is a scary thing for you. Um, you've heard us talk about the dealership and why you can trust our dealership. You've heard other shoppers, other customers talk about the positive experience they've had telling you that you can trust us. But you know what, if, if anything goes wrong, if, if for some reason you're not happy, You've got me. I'm in your corner. And that's what the service manager introduction video Greg, is all about. Greg, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you been working here at Crossroads? I've been working here since uh, we opened the door six years ago. That's great. Now, tell me, why should a customer get their service work done here at this dealership? Well, I feel like personally there's several reasons why a customer should come here. First of all, we have factory train technicians. We have, you know, use factory parts. And not only that, but all of my employees, including myself and service advisor, know that we're going to do the right thing here. And we're going to treat every customer the way that we personally want our employees to be treated if they were to come in some place in the business. That's great. Uh, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? Hobbies, family? Uh, I'm from Ottawa, Mississippi. I have a wife, Allison, and three kids. Uh, two of those happen to be a set of three year old twins, a one girl. Uh, I, in the automotive business, so of course I like to pull with hot rods and horses. Uh, I train horses and they pull with hot rods and store will be able to street rods type of thing. Anything with a motor or anything like that, I enjoy doing. And uh, if somebody needed to get in touch with you, what, what could they do? Uh, they can get in touch with me anytime. Uh, you can contact me through email at Craig at CrossroadsGM.net or uh, reach me here at the division. Sounds good, Craig. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's the interview style. Now here's one that had a little uh, more production work uh, added to it. My name's Jeff Anderson. Uh, I work here at Toyota of Cajon. I've been here in excess of 15 years. I'm the shop foreman, the lead master tech, as well as a team leader. By the time I was 23, I was already an AC master technician and an expert level technician through Toyota. How do you doing, know, Jeff Anderson, shop foreman? Nice to meet you today. Thanks for coming to see us. I love my job. Um, I'm excited to come to work every single day. I'm mainly involved with running a team and uh, interacting with our customers and trying to solve problems for them. So the most exciting part of my day is when I have a, a, a challenging problem with a customer that they can't figure out and maybe someone else has to figure out that I can go in there and dissect it and figure out exactly what's going on with their vehicle or with their concern and try to make them happy. Uh, it's definitely hands-on all day long. Yeah, being involved with Twitter right now is an exciting, exciting time in our lives. There's so many different technologies we come out with, you know, with the Prius and the hybrids and the, the smart key technologies. Um, it seems like Twitter doesn't have an end to what they're able to do for us. And what that is is keep us learning, keep us involved, keep us excited about the new programs that are coming out, the new products that are coming out. Like you're always having new opportunities, new challenges brought to you every single day. So no, no matter if you've been in the business for one year or 10 years or 30 years, you're always going to have those new challenges to learn new things every day. I think. So again, they put a little more, uh, little more work uh, into into that particular video. The thing about it, the you want to make sure that again, it's about humanizing. It's about making the person likable. Um, we know that people buy from people they from people that they trust, and we know people trust people that they like. So, the more likable you can make your people. Um, the more comfortable the shoppers are going to feel. And this doesn't have to be just for the service manager. You can have an introduction video like this for everyone at your store where you're really, uh, really humanizing, really uh, getting the, 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 the public, anyone that's watching that video to go, you know what, it's a, what, what a nice person, what a nice guy, what a nice gal. Um, and that's what it's about, making it personal. Um, brag about the years of experience that you have, any particular awards uh, that you had. And if uh, uh, no matter who it is, you always want to send that message. You can trust me. You can count on me. I'm here for you. So it's a very, uh, very important part of the equation when uh, 
talking about these the, the the main reason that's keeping shoppers from visiting your service department the fear uh, and lack of trust so what can also really play a huge role in um, not just getting uh, getting you found because how-to videos are one of the biggest search terms out on the uh, out on, on on the web uh, people are, are always looking for how do I do this how do I do that and service customers um, in particular um, not necessarily because they want to do the service themselves they there's that curiosity um, like uh, the the one testimonial with the gentleman standing over the bridge and watching the service being done and commenting about that the fact that he can he can stand here and watch what's being done to his vehicle so that's really what it's a, what the consumers are curious about or what are you going to do a lot of dealerships have a, this fear that well if I go create these how-to videos I'm going to be driving shoppers out of my service bay because now they're going to try to do it themselves and no they're not you know the you have a certain group of the public out there of, of the population that are the do-it-yourselfers and they're going to do it themselves whether you have this video or not then you have the majority of the consumers out there who even though they're curious they still don't have the time they don't have the equipment they don't have the patience um, and most importantly if you do the how-to video correctly um, they don't have the confidence uh, in doing the repair themselves so the the how-to video uh, you want to make sure that you're creating your own fear now so you want to pick some of your most common services uh, some of your most profitable services and you want to show what work uh, is involved um, do little clips to show partial teasers this isn't a from beginning to end type of a video where your your video you're, you're making a video of the entire process you can do short little clips um, of little uh, you know certain little aspects of it um, but most importantly what you want to talk about again thinking about the fear why why am I uh, curious about potentially doing it myself versus just taking it down to the store is one is you know how, how long is this thing really going to take and why does it take that long so discuss um, the time involved in this particular type of repair and why it takes that much time discuss any unique tools that are needed any kind of special equipment that's needed to correctly uh, do this repair um, so that the uh, anybody who's kind of thinking about you know uh, from a curiosity perspective um, you know understand well I don't have those kinds of tools you know there's no way I want to do this myself uh, but then they also understand that well that's probably that's another reason why that this particular service does cost this particular amount of money and that may be another reason why I want to take it to a certified dealer versus just some local mechanic down the street because he may not have all these specialized uh, pieces of equipment either um, really talk about what can go wrong if you don't do the service immediately so if you know if, if you're having if you're experiencing this symptom this symptom this symptom and you don't get this fixed right away here are some of the additional expenses you could be looking at because here are some of the additional repairs you're going to need because you didn't fix this one right away simultaneous if you try to do this if you're trying if, if you are thinking about doing this yourself at home um, be aware that this can go wrong and this can go wrong and if these things happen here's the additional time and the additional money that it's going to take to you know fix the big problem that you created from not doing a small problem correctly so uh, using that fear can really uh, can really go a long way in really helping believe it or not help the helping the shopper trust you 
um, and understanding that you know they're they're not trying to just rip me off when they tell me that here's some of the additional repairs I need um, when I when you finally get there because you've already preempted that by letting them know if you're having these symptoms here are some other things that could that have either already gone wrong or could go wrong um, so you can you can go this these videos can go a long way plus uh, using them in your uh, uh, alongside of your other videos really tells the shopper that wow these guys are they're going out of their way they're they're sending the a message to everybody that um, you know here's here's how you do it if you don't trust us to do it yourself here's here's how you do it um, so th that's a, that goes a long way in really helping build trust with the shopper and this can also easily be done as an interview so that's one of the biggest pushbacks I hear from the service department department from the mechanics is you know people start to freak out a little bit when they get a camera on them and um, you know they don't necessarily want to shoot the repair they don't want to be alone with the camera so if you can just like the interview if you need to start this way and and, and ease people's uh, anxiety a little bit that's that's absolutely fine it can still be a very informative video and you just I, I included a little uh, script, if you will, that you can take and you can use with your mechanics. So, um, you know, you again, it's a very basic blueprint. You want to talk about their experience, the number, uh, the the amount of time that they've been, um, you know, cert any certifications that they that they have, um, the number of times that they've performed this particular type of a service. Um, then you really want to get into what we we're just talking about and that's you know ask them to share what other what what what's going to go wrong if you don't fix this right away what are some things that could go wrong during the repair that if you don't if you're if you don't do the repair correctly um, if you don't utilize the right tools the right equipment um, what how can you make it worse what uh, what additional expenses can you add to the uh, to the overall repair so that's the uh, the how tos, and now we're getting to the good stuff. You know, when the shopper is finally in your store, man, we all are just waiting. We know if we're sitting in the in the waiting room, we're just waiting. We know somebody's going to be coming in any second and showing me all these other things I need to get fixed. It's a, such an anxious moment for everybody sitting in that service department. If we dropped our car off, man, we're just watching that phone. We're just waiting. I know somebody's going to be calling. I know they're going to be saying, "I need to fix this. I need to fix that." Um, you know, we we all know what's going to happen. So it's a part of the process. Ninety nine point point nine percent of the time, you know, it, it, it's it's true. All these additional repairs are necessary and are needed. Unfortunately, over the history of time, there have been repair shops out there who. Uh, unfortunately aren't always honest and aren't always forthright and the rest of us have to overcome their mistakes um, because they've done a very good job of creating this the, making this a legitimate fear making it real so what we can do to really remove the fear of is this something that I really need to have done or not is give visual proof and that's what a video will do. So, um, you know, you try to give visual proof with little things like, you know, showing how dirty the air filter is when changing oil and, and you need your air filter change too. Look how dirty this thing is. You know, little things like that um, to try to add that visualization. Well, when you, when the, when the customer drops their car off, if you can just get the permission to, to, to have the mechanic text them send them a text video um, showing you um, you know the repair that they're doing and if there's any additional things uh, repairs that need that might need to be done they'll send you a quick video of that as well does that sound cool which uh, you know is this number we should text you at and whether they're sitting in the waiting room or whether they've dropped their vehicle off uh, and have, and have driven down the road uh, you want to make sure that you send it uh, the text to them with the, the that visual um, 
proof with the mechanic also then talking about exactly what we were talking about in the how-to video and that's look if you don't get this here's the risk here's why I'm worried about you here's why this concerns me and more importantly yeah it's an additional X number of dollars right now but if you don't get this fixed right away here's the additional uh, money that this could potentially cost you because this can also then uh, have an impact on this part of your vehicle and this part of your vehicle is going to impact your fuel mileage by this one. All kinds of different things that your mechanic can say while talking and, and giving that visualization to the shopper of the additional repairs that need to be done. And that it all boils down to exactly you know what we started talking about in the beginning and it's that's humanizing the experience and overcoming those fears. Now, once we have these videos, what do we do with them? How do we get the best use out of them? Well, I'm going to backpedal for a second and talk about the upsell video. The first thing you need to do is deliver those on a landing page that includes your value proposition and your testimonial videos along with the service manager videos. All the other videos that we just talked about need to be included. If you have a how-to video for that particular repair, include that as well. But even if, even if you don't have the how-to video, you want the value proposition video, you want the introduction video and the testimonial videos all right there so that when the shopper is watching the here's what else needs to be fixed video, they can have quick access should they choose to watch them uh, those other videos that then you've got other people telling them hey you know what you can trust these people you, you can trust they, they're going to take care of you they're not just trying to rip you off and really help relieve a lot of that anxiety in that upsell so that's one place that you can definitely use them is alongside each other and that's with each one of them so no matter where they're being seen, um, obviously you want a page for each on your website. Um, you don't want someone to have to go trying to find them. Make sure that they're they're clearly marked service testimony, you know, under your service department section, service testimonials, um, how to service department how-to videos. Meet the service department team, and when they get to that page, then boom, here's your introduction videos for each of your people. Um, obviously, uh, you can have similar pages on your Facebook where you don't just, you know, you're not just posting content to your wall that is then gone a day, you know, a day or a week later, but you can have an, an entire tab um, that's titled how, service department how-to videos. Um, meet our team uh, videos, all those little tabs for each of the different types. Um, obviously not the upsell videos, you want to make sure those are uh, those are private. Um, if you are using YouTube to, to post those, you want to make sure uh, to host those videos, you want to make sure that those are marked private and that they can't be seen uh, by anybody um, that, 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 that hasn't specifically been given that URL. Um, but the it, you do want to leverage YouTube for the other types of videos because they can get you a lot of traffic, a lot of exposure um, when people are out doing certain types of uh, uh, of searches or uh, looking for uh, looking for 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 some kind of a proof that that they can trust you that you know that they're able to find that types of content. Um, great content. Uh, for for your blogs and your forums, uh, I'm I'm going to assume most of you already have your own blogs, um, and so they're great for your own. But they're also great content um, for other blogs and other forums. Um, obviously, any uh, you know, anytime you're doing uh, any kind of service department promotions, you're pr you've got an ad that you're going to do for this particular type of service or that particular type of service. Um, use video landing pages um, for for, uh, for the promotion that have these videos on them 
so that when somebody comes to look at that particular promotion, boom, here's the value proposition video, here's the testimonial videos, here's the how-to videos, um, all right there uh, supporting that message and bringing them home. So that then brings us to the hosted video platform. Now, the one thing that you know I really try to avoid when I'm talking, uh, doing webinars is any kind of promotion um, of our company or anything of that nature, but um, this this is where a a you know there are several video hosting companies that specialize in the automotive industry. So I'm not just talking about us, um, but there are advantages to using a hosted platform versus just using YouTube uh, as the host. Not that again, if you're hosted on another platform, still leveraging YouTube, but hosting your videos on a specialized platform because you the you start to get a lot of advantages that you just can't get with YouTube. One quick example is just being able to send that quick text message um, on a landing page that has your, your videos other videos associated with it. Um, you know that's 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 a simple one. From there though it really starts getting to to being what you can do with the data. Um, if you're not using the data of what's happening with your videos, whether it's in your your sale on the sales side of your dealership or your service side of the dealership, this is something as you start talking about a video marketing strategy that your your words need to start encompassing. Because there's there's one strategy of we've got video, then there's all these business strategies that you have. You've got a marketing strategy, you've got a sales strategy, um, but they don't necessarily merge. There's this big gap in between, yeah, we've got these videos, and here's our marketing strategy, here's our sales strategy. A good marketing strategy is going to incorporate a video marketing strategy. And you're going to use the data of, of, of what's happening across the world as a shopper's watching your video. Doesn't matter what video it is. You're going to use the your marketing data, the things you're doing with your specials and your promotions, the coupons that you have available this month. Yeah, you've got them in one spot on your website and you send them out in um, you know your local newspaper and this little local uh, uh, periodical and this little local uh, you know magazine and, and whatnot but that's it if you can leverage the data that you've got from viewers from shoppers that are watching this video and watching that video and know that if somebody's been on your service department page and uh, they watch this how-to video or that how-to video then boom because you have a special uh, for that exact thing, you could you could throw it up a, a banner right there on on their their video that says, "Hey, here's a coupon for it." Even um, all kinds. There's really no limit. It's all rule based. It's behavior based. There's really if if you've got a marketing strategy, if you've got that that includes coupons or specials or incentives uh, for your service department, you can leverage that on any video that's being watched out there except YouTube, which is why uh, you, you, this is an advantage of a host, uh, video hosting platform versus YouTube. Um, same with uh, any type of message that you've got out there. You can follow shoppers who have been in your, on your service side and then all of a sudden, a month, two months, six months later, they show up over on your sales side. They show up in a video email campaign. They show up uh, in a video email that your BDC sent out for a lead follow-up. Um, all different, all these different things that you can do to tie to get that shopper information. Where when they're on the sell side, they would be they would be anonymous. You wouldn't even know who they are. But because they're in your CRM, they're part of your database because they were a service department uh, video or a service customer, and they opened this. Uh, they opened your video email or your upsell text that you sent them. They open that and watch that video 
from the same device that they watch the video email from the lead form follow up that the uh, BDC department did. You know that's Joe Smith. You know the you know the exact or one of the vehicles that Joe Smith has that he might be trading in. There's so many things that you can do with the data that's out there and available right now. Um, it's scary to think of where it's all going. There's only a little bit that's available to you. It's not that, that, that it doesn't exist. It exists right now today. You probably can't utilize all of it the way you're going to a year or two years from now, but it's there. And if you can think creatively, and if you can, again, if we talk about your marketing strategy and your sales strategy, and then you talk about, you, you add in where the where the, the touch points, where do where does a video, uh, no matter what kind of video it is, fit into those equations and understand that every time somebody clicks that button to watch the video, you've got the data and you can combine that data, merge that data, and leverage that data along with your sales and marketing strategies to really enhance the experience for your shopper. And that's what it's all about. If we're talking about what does all of this cost you, it doesn't cost you hardly anything at all. You've probably already got a video camera there at your store. If you don't have it, I'm sure everybody's got somebody there at your store has a smartphone. Um, it's all you need. Um, you don't have to buy expensive video equipment. You don't have to all buy, have all this fancy lighting. You don't have to have any fancy uh, video editing tools. Most, uh, if you got a Windows computer, it probably comes with uh, uh, the Windows Movie Maker, and it's very functional at, at taking and, and doing some, some editing, uh, and it's already there. It's very easy to use, um, very user-friendly. The learning curve is extremely short. Um, you, in a very quick amount of time, you could have some extremely good video content uh, created. Um, try to shoot from a controlled environment. Um, obviously, you don't want uh, too many loud noises going on. I know in one of the testimonials, um, you know, they they were adding the sound. They wanted to make sure they had the sound of the service department um, prevalent in certain times because they really wanted to to to, to set that mood. But you may not want that all of the time. So make certain that um, you know you're not in, a, in an environment where you're going to have certain distractions or interruptions um, that that you don't want. Um, for the audio option, again, you can talk while shooting the video. You can uh, just shoot the video and have people come in and, and do audio layers. Uh, you know, post production. Um, there's all different kinds of things you can do for the, you know, to get good quality audio uh, on there. But uh, mainly, you know, it comes down to the the impact your video is going to have is based completely on the content of that video. So just remember two things: be be informative, but but be sincere. And if you're being sincere, that's what's going to overcome those fears. It's, it's that's what's going to humanize the message and you know people can quickly tell when they're when they're watching a video when they're looking at somebody that's the power of the video is you can tell when somebody's being sincere so just make sure that you're being sincere and giving good quality information um, and your videos are going to be fine All, a lot of these other things are, are not going to have as big of an impact as those two particular uh, things. So thank you all again for visiting. I tried to, to go fairly quick so we could get you uh, back to work um, with the end of the month rolling around. Uh, if, we, we, if we do have questions, we certainly uh, have time to answer some of them. But we also, the presentation, I think a recording of the presentation or the, or the PowerPoint itself will be available if, uh, if you'd like that as well. Yes, yes. Actually, I, I am recording this, and so if, if anybody would like to see the recording, just shoot me an email at brian, with an I, B-R-I-A-N, at autosuccessonline.com, 
or you can go to Auto Success Webinars. I'll, I will post this to the, to the group Auto Success Webinars on Facebook. Um, actually, we do have a few questions, Tim. But I think you, you, the first one was typed in before before you kind of before your last slide there, and it, and it was if you don't have great video skills, will a less professional video hurt? You kind of touched that, but you want to maybe revisit that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in a lot in a lot of circumstances, a less professional video is better than a production style video. Um, not necessarily saying that it should be completely raw and unedited by any means, but um, you know, it's hard. You, you, you start losing some of that sincerity when you add too much production to a video. People don't want to, the shopper doesn't want to see another commercial. They want to see you. They want to get to know you. So, yeah, without question, a lot of times um, a, a lower, less produced video is going gonna, is gonna to be better overall. Okay. Um, should, should everyone in the dealership put the dealership video in their, their, their um, I'm sorry, the value proposition video in their email signature? Well, there's certainly no reason you can't link to it. Um, you know, have a little, uh, you know, learn more about me, uh, and then somebody can click on it and you go to a landing page that, uh, you know, that, that has the dealership's value proposition video. Your, the main video is you, but then there's also a dealership value proposition video, maybe a dealership testimonial and a personal testimonial where a, a couple of shoppers have, who, a couple of your customers are talking about you specifically. Okay. How, how many how many repair repair process videos should a dealership have? You know, there's uh, the the how do I say it? I guess the rule of thumb is you need to have at least one. <laughs> um, so zero one one's better than zero. Um, and from there, it's really hard to have too many. So, I mean, a lot of it's it's content. So I, I'm, 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 I've got two answers for the question, and one is you don't necessarily need uh, a video for 100% of every year, make, model that your service department can work on and every repair, you know, of that. You know, if there's certain specific repairs, you know, let's say, for instance, uh, um, the two, you know, the, the Ford F-150 has a, um, I'm going to forget the name of it, a, a purge valve that they changed in 2010, I think. Um, up, up to 2010, they used, up to 2009, they used a certain style of purge valve, and then they changed it. So every, every new 2000, and, every 10, from 2010 on, they all have this new style, and the new style fails a lot. So, you know, you can have, just have two. So now you've got one video talking about the EVAC purge valve for Ford F-150s from year uh, 2000 and, uh, you know, let's say 2000 through 2009. Um, and then you've got one for 2010, you know, through 2016. Um, and so, now, and the reason is content. So now you take that. Yes, you've got it on your website. Um, you know, but you, and now that it's on your website, you want to make sure that it's. Um, and this is really leading into something I should have talked about. I, I apologize that I didn't. Having video on your website does nothing for you unless you use it correctly. Now, if you're using it correctly, having video on your website will do more for you or as much as having that video on YouTube. The reason I say that is what a lot of web a lot of website companies are still really learning how to leverage video. So you've got to meta tag your videos correctly. You've got to have the right name, you've got to have the right uh, description, you've got to have the right uh, title um, for your videos. You've got to reference all of those videos correctly on your website and then you have to have a video sitemap. Now, I'm, I'm sure most of your website companies know how to build a video sitemap, 
but unfortunately not many of the website companies in the industry today are utilizing video sitemaps. Well, Google wants you to. Google will tell you flat out, if you're using video on your website, please use a video sitemap. Make this easy for us. Tell us what videos are there. And if you're using that video sitemap, you're potentially going to get indexed higher with the utilization of that video sitemap then you then that exact same video is is going to get indexed from uh, from YouTube but either way whether it's the one from your website or the one that's on YouTube it's content and by having those the, that video twice one for uh, 2000 and you know up to 2009s and one for uh, 2010s to 2016, making certain you've got you've got all the right keywords and everything, you know, all uh, filled in there. Anybody who types in then, um, somebody's got a 2015 Ford F-150 and and are you know experiencing certain the, the symptoms of the person, or maybe they go and get a diagnostic and it gives them the codes. And those are things you want in your descriptions as, as well, right? You want to you want to make sure you're talking about. Uh, you know, it's it's code number, you know, such and uh, you know this, that, and the other. So, but anybody that types that in is going to find that video. So, uh, the more content you have, the more attention you're going to be able to uh, to obviously bring to your store. The more the more volume uh, you're going to you're going to be able to drive to your website. So, um, more is better, uh, without question. So there's no there's no limit to how many you should have, um, and and there's just definitely no rule that you have to have a certain number or, or certain ones. But the biggest thing is don't let it overwhelm you. You know, when we start talking about how much do, how much content do I got to have, and then people start you know looking at good, better, and best, everybody's looking at best and gets overwhelmed. And because they look at what's best and look at all the work involved with being the, being the best in, in content generation, uh, you know, how-to video content generation, they're like, oh, wow, there's no way I'm going to really get there. So then they, they don't do anything. And so you're back down at zero now, whereas if you just do one, that's, that, that, now you got one. That's one step in the right direction. You can't take two steps until you've taken that first one. Okay. Well, um, actually, there was one one other question about it was about the slide deck. Um, yes, uh, I the the slide deck the slide deck is available. If you could please send me an email and I will send it to you. Um, yeah, if anybody wants it, the slide deck or, or or to see or the recording, please send an email to Brian with an I at autosuccessonline.com. Um, that, that, that's our last question. Um, everybody, I'd like to remind you to uh, join the group Auto Success webinars. That way, you'll you'll never miss a webinar that you want to see because we post them all there. Um, and if there's topics you'd like to see covered in the future, uh, especially if there's a video topic, you know Tim and I do these every every month. And so, if there's a video topic or, or something you want to learn more about, please please shoot me an email. Go in the group and mention it. And tag me in it, and 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 we'll we'll cover it for you. Uh, Tim, I'd like to thank you for for taking the time out of your day today to share all this good information with everybody. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with, with, our, with our listeners and viewers uh, b before we go? It's an exciting, uh, these are exciting times. And, you know, it's, uh, it's not that video is the future because it's videos now. Um, you have to start getting good at putting together a video marketing strategy now. Um, and just, just kind of like we were just talking about with the good, better, best scenario. Um, you're not going to start getting good until you start. So start, stop looking at it as just, I got to have video. I need this type of, video, type of video, that type of video, and start looking at it from a, a merging of your sales and marketing strategies with video content. And that's it. Well, great, great. Well, everyone, everyone in attendance, thank you for coming. Um, as, as I mentioned, Tim, Tim is a regular guest. We do one of these every month. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time, and I, and I, I hope you all finish the month strong. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody.